Hello, and thanks for watching our how-to video on using iNaturalist. In this video, I will walk you through making observations on iNaturalist and utilizing the different features of the app. First, open the app up on your phone. The symbol is a white square with a lime green bird in the middle. When it loads, you will be prompted to sign in. You will need to either log in with your credentials or create an account. I already have an account, so I'm going to click log in and type in my information. After you get logged in, you will automatically be taken to your observations page. Here, you can see all of the observations you have made in the past. Obviously, I have made a decent number of observations, and it's pretty neat that I can still see all of them listed here. Next, we will learn to make observations of your own. Click on the observe button in the bottom center that looks like a camera. You can make observations via taking pictures on your camera, uploading a photo from your camera roll, or recording a sound. First, we will make an observation by using the camera. After you click on the camera icon, it will open up your camera automatically on your phone. From here, take a photo of the thing you would like to identify. I am taking a photo of this dewberry flower here. After you take the photo, you can either retake it or click use photo to upload. After you choose your photo, you will see the white screen here. iNaturalist uses geotagging from your phone to pull location information as well as date and time. To start the ID process, click what did you see to see suggestions. iNaturalist has a list of, suggest of suggested identifications for the photo you have taken. If you click on the suggestion, it will take you to see information about what you have selected. Here you see I go through a couple of different options and try to choose which one is best. Now I know that this is a dewberry, but I'm not certain of which subspecies, so I'm going to select the genus suggestion to get a broader identification. After you select it, click share at the bottom to upload your observation. While this is uploading, let's look at how to upload with a photo from your library. Click on observe at the bottom again, just like we did the first time, then select camera roll. I'm going to select these purple flowers here and go through the same process. Notice it will once again provide suggestions. I know that this is Dakota Mock Vervain, so I'm going to select that to upload. Then I will share this observation. Last, we will take a sound recording to upload. It will use the microphone built into your phone. So select the observe button again at the bottom, click record sound, and hit the green microphone to start your recording when you are ready. After you finish your recording, hit save recording. I am not sure what species of bird I recorded, and iNaturalist is not suggesting any IDs here. So, I will select birds to group it into that broader category. Utilizing some sort of broad identification is always better than leaving it blank. It makes it easier for others to find the observation and ID it. While these upload, you can see any of your other observations. Here, you can tell if people have made comments or suggested identifications on your older observations. On my old observation of Dakota Mock Vervain, you can see there is a red speech bubble with a one in it. If I click on that and scroll down, you can see that someone made an ID suggestion. Next, we will click on the Explore tab on the bottom left of your screen. This will show you all of the observations around you via GPS. As these start to load, you can see them start to fill in around me. The observations can be sorted at the top. By clicking on the one that looks like a list at the far right, you get a list view of all the observations around you. You can also see a grid view of the photo clips by clicking on the grid button in the middle at the top. You can also browse around the map to see different areas that you might be interested in too. Let's scroll over and look at St. Gabriel Park. 
There are lots of different observations to look through there too. Doing this can help inform you what you might see on your next walk in the area you're in. If you click on the tag, you can see more detailed information about each observation like this frog here. Next, let's explore the activity button at the bottom. Under the My Content tab, you can see all the suggestions and comments people have made on your observations. Under the News tab at the top, you can see news stories that iNaturalist has recently shared about the natural world. Lastly, let's explore the More section at the bottom right. First, let's click on Projects. Here you can see all of the projects that you have joined. Some of these are one-off events and some, like Herbs of Texas, is a broader collection project that anyone can participate in. The Featured and Nearby tabs show other project options at the top. All of the projects that I set up at Gary are collection projects, meaning if an observation is made here, it will automatically be included in the project without the user needing to join or do anything extra. Now let's go back to the original More Play page and click on Guides. I utilize guides much more on the computer than on my phone. As you can see, I have not joined any guides. If you search for something, a guide might or might not come up. Guides are lists of species with information about the different species within them, basically. They can be useful. Lots of good images and information about different species. I like to utilize them particularly for butterflies. Thanks for joining me on this tour of iNaturalist and I hope you found it helpful. Yay, citizen science!